What's going on, everybody? Crazy Dog, back with another video. And you guys already know what time it is. It's time for my Browns-Ravens Week 1 preview as the Browns start the 2020 season on the road in Baltimore, Maryland at m and Bank Stadium as we face off against the defending AFC North champions, the Baltimore Ravens. And in my opinion... There's no better way to start the season than by facing off against the defending division champs. That's a good way to make a statement to start a season, right? Now, I'm pretty sure everyone and their mother remembers what happened last time we faced the Ravens in Baltimore. Of course, I know Ravens fans don't want to remember this, but I'm going to refresh your memory, all right? I'm going to make you remember what happened. So... Background information, we came into this game one and two, coming off a loss to the Rams in prime time. The Ravens, meanwhile, took their first L of the season against the Chiefs in week three. So they were coming in looking for a big bounce back W while we were coming in looking for a statement W. And uh, yeah, what a statement, right? As we would go into Baltimore and we would proceed to stomp a mud hole in the Ravens and then walk it dry as we pounded the Ravens 40 to 25 in their own house. Of course, as I said in my victory video, we essentially, you know, kicked down their door, we beat their asses, and then we raided their fridge, we sat on their couch, put our feet up, and then watched their TV. That's essentially what we did. Now, uh, how did our guys do? Well, Baker Mayfield, uh, he uh, threw for 342 yards against the greatest defense of all time. He only had one touchdown and one interception on a 20 of 30 passing. So not the worst, but he was pretty good. Boy, he was really good. Yeah, wasn't amazing, but he was good. 342 yards, though. That's, that's pretty impressive. The other stuff, meh. You know, it's whatever. Now, uh, Nick Chubb, on the other hand, mm-hmm. He became your daddy that day. And so he had 20 carries, 165 yards, and not one, not two, but three touchdowns, including a 90-plus yard touchdown run in which Earl Thomas, who arguably had the best chance to stop him, decided to spare his hamstrings, and he gave up on the play. He just started jogging. He's like, I'm done. I'm out. See ya. Now, we beat these guys so bad in that game that after the game, speaking of Earl Thomas, he freaking tried to fight, I believe it was Brandon Williams. He got into an altercation in the locker room with a freaking teammate. Now, of course, uh, that wouldn't be the only time he would do that. As uh, we remember, what, a few weeks ago, he got into an altercation with Chuck Clark after a blown coverage. Gotta love that, right? Love a guy who's uh, a locker room cancer, <laughs> right? But yeah, I mean, we beat them so bad. We had them pretty much fighting each other. I'd love to see that. Now, of course, uh, after this game, we really wouldn't get anywhere near this level of like dominance. You know, like we would win three straight games later in the year. But after that, we kind of fell flat on our face. Meanwhile, the Ravens would not lose another regular season game. And they would finish 14-2. and two, and then they would go to the playoffs, and you guessed it, they would get first rounded by Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, and the Tennessee Titans in a game in which, much like Nick Chubb, Derrick Henry made the Ravens' greatest defense of all time his bitch. Mm -hmm. I don't like swearing in my videos, but it's true. Nick Chubb and Derrick Henry sunned the greatest defense of all time. Yeah, Ravens Red Zone legit called their defense the greatest defense of all time, yet they got run over by two of the best running backs in the NFL. Love to see it. Now, talking about the game this week. Okay, so looking at the Ravens, you know, they still got a really good team. Everyone's picking them to win the division. I've even seen some people pick them to go undefeated, which we all know that fam sure ain't happening. But uh, I think they're probably going to take a little step back. Maybe like 13-3, you know, around there, 12-4, and four, you know. But uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, they're going to have their hands full with this offense because I'm telling you one thing, man. 
Hmm, if this offense is clicking, good luck stopping us because we got Chubb, we got Kareem Hunt, of course. You know, we got Hooper, we got Harrison Bryant, we got David Njoku. Hopefully, you know, uh, he develops hands. You know, that'd be great if he could actually find out how to use his hands. You know, that'd be good too. Uh, we got Odell, who's healthy. We got Jarvis, who's healthy. We got Higgins. We got Donovan Peoples Jones. So, yeah, we're pretty much loaded on offense. Now, as for our defense, Front seven's looking good. Linebacker's a little iffy. Secondary's beat to crap. I think we only have like three healthy corners as of right now. I mean, Denzel Ward, who's kind of low-key injury prone. You know, I would love to see him have a healthy season this year. You know, I think he'll have a good year if he can stay healthy. But other than him, you got Money Mitch and Tavier Thomas, who's a primary special teamer. Lovely, Right. Now, luckily, you know, the Ravens receiving core doesn't really scare me, but uh, their tight ends do, especially Mark Andrews. That dude is a beast. I'm, I'm going to be real with you. You know, I hate your team, but Mark Andrews is an absolute beast. You know, <laughs> I mean, God, bro, that dude killed us in that second game for real, man. But yeah, of course, Ravens fans are going to brag about that game. I mean, you struggled against a trash Browns team with no pass rush and a dunce at head coach. Good job. Fantastic. But yeah, um, imagine winning your division only to get hit with the one and done again. Because remember, the year before, they were first rounded by the Chargers. So yeah, two straight years. Chargers, then the Titans. So uh, you got to wonder, who's it going to be this year? Or we'll find out. Because... I'm pretty sure the Ravens are uh, going to make the playoffs unless they completely collapse. I mean, you never know. I mean, it is 2020. Anything can happen. Who knows what's going to happen, bro? But uh, talking about this game, it's going to be tough. Of course, there will be no fans, so the Ravens will not have that home field advantage that they're really well known for. Of course, when that stadium is packed, it's jamming, and it's a very hard place to play. It's one of the most hostile environments, which makes it even crazier that we legit went in there last year, and we beat the crap out of these guys. So how about we do it again, huh? I would love that. Ooh, man. I mean, if we lose... You know, it's whatever. It's week one. We haven't won in week one since 2004 with Jeff freaking Garcia. So it's been like, ah, whatever. But if we win, and we win two straight games in Baltimore, ooh, man, that'd be a story. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know it. You already know it. Imagine all the people that picked them to go undefeated after that. They lose week one. Well, no more undefeated. Oh, well, 15-1. and one. <sighs> But, yeah, I mean, um... This should be a really fun game. But uh, let's get on to the three keys to victory. Of course, key number one is we got to establish the run early. We get Chubb and Hunt going, that's going to open up the passing game. And then things will be going good and we'll be cooking. Because if they can't stop the run, oh, man, how are they going to stop the pass, bro? I mean, crap. Who needs to pass the ball when you can just run it down your throat all day, right? Yeah. Now, uh, key number two, this is the big one. We need to stop their offense. We got to score first. Yeah, that's kind of like a 2A and B. We got to score first, and we got to stop them. Pretty easy, right? I mean, the freaking Ravens. <laughs> Easier said than done. I mean, God, their offense is pretty good. You know, when they're clicking, you know, if they score first, all they got to do is just run out the clock. That's what they do. Their offense was not built to come back last year, although I'm pretty sure they improved on that this year. I'm pretty sure they're not just going to be that kind of team. Oh, you know, we got a lead. You know, that's it. No, oh, they're probably going to uh, improve. I'm sure Lamar Jackson improved on his throwing ability. You know, they still got Mark Ingram. They got my guy, J.K. Dobbins. They got some nice weapons. You know, uh, it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a freaking war. And I'm freaking excited. But like I said, man, if we score first and we can let these dogs just attack, bro, we let this pass rush get after Lamar. If Miles Garrett and Olivier Vernon are living in their backfield, hmm, it's going to be some trouble for the Ravens. Of course, they did lose Marshall Yonda, but their offensive line, other than that, is still really, really good. So it's going to be tough. But I think Miles will be able to get in there and maybe get a couple sacks on Lamar, maybe force a couple turnovers. That'd be good too, right? Now, uh, for key number three, this is a big one because uh, we didn't do a very good job of this uh, week one last year, and that is uh, no penalties. Or limit penalties. Last year, week one, we had 18 penalties in one game. 
Bruh, talk about no discipline. I mean, God. But yeah, if we can limit penalties and also limit turnovers, that's, I guess, another 3A, 3B situation there. You know, limit penalties and limit turnovers. Take care of the ball. It's pretty much it right there, you know. Don't do stupid things, pretty much. But um, as for my player to watch in this game, I'm going to say it's Nick Chubb. Because if Nick Chubb is out there running wild, things are looking good. You know, if this running game is going, like I said, that's going to open up the passing game and things are going to start rolling together. You know, this offense gets into a rhythm, it's going to be very hard to stop. Guys are getting open. Watch out. Now, uh, as for my final score prediction, I know I said we were going to lose in my schedule prediction, but uh, ever since then, I'm like, you know what? Something tells me we're going to win this game. You know, wouldn't that be great if we freaking win two straight in Baltimore? That'd be great. But, yeah, uh, I think uh, we actually win this game, you know, but uh, I could see us losing. If we win, it's probably going to be like by an Austin Seibert game-winning field goal as time expires. But if we lose, uh, I think it'll be maybe like a seven or ten point loss, you know, typical Browns, right? You know, we're like down by a touchdown late. And then we turn the ball over because we're panicking. We're trying to push the ball up the field to, you know, quickly to, you know, get some get something going. And then they get a turnover and they drive down the field. We hold them to a field goal. And that's it. So uh, in retrospect, I would love to see us win in this game. But uh, I actually think, uh, hmm, this is tough. Because I could honestly see us winning this game, honestly. I'm going to say we uh, screw it. I say we win this game. I think Austin Seibert wins it with the last second field goal. And we beat the Ravens again in Baltimore. So uh, there you have it. Now I uh, got something special. I got five bold predictions for the 2020 season for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, number five is the least bold prediction. And number one is the most bold prediction. Bold prediction number five. The Browns will have multiple players achieve a thousand yard seasons. So I think it'll be Beckham, Landry, and Chubb, or Beckham, Hooper, Chubb, or Chubb, Hooper, Landry, or something like that. I think we'll have multiple players achieve a thousand yard seasons. I could see it being like Chubb and Beckham Landry. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Number four, Miles Garrett will get 20 sacks this season, and this is very attainable. And um, I think he'll get around 15 to 20 sacks. He's going to break the uh, Browns single season sack record and he's going to set his own and he's going to make it very tough for anyone to beat that record. I think 20 is definitely uh, a goal for him this year. Number three, Baker will throw for over 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns and 15 interceptions. I think he'll throw around that range like between like 3,000, maybe 3,500 yards, maybe between like 25, 30 touchdowns. And he'll have probably like a, uh, 15, maybe 20 picks. I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen? It's going to be crazy to see what he does. I hope he has a big year this year, though. Our number two, we got Browns will make the playoffs. Yeah, this is hella bold because there's some pretty good teams coming up in the AFC. And then number one, my most bold prediction, my boldest prediction, Browns will win the division. And you see why I made this my boldest prediction? Because honestly, it's tough. The AFC North is going to be a bloodbath this year. Big Ben's back. The Ravens ain't going nowhere. And we've powered up, so it's going to be a war. The only team that I'm pretty sure will not have a chance to win the North is the Bungles, because they're the Bungles. What do you expect? You know, they suck. <laughs> oh, we got Joe Burrow. Who cares? You guys still suck. You know, Baker Mayfield's your daddy. <laughs> but in fact, the whole AFC North is your daddy. Bro, seriously, just shut up. Shut up, stupid. <laughs> but yeah, um... That's going to wrap it up for this video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. I already know there's going to be hella Ravens fans talking trash, but honestly, I don't care. You know, it's Ravens week. I'm freaking ready. Football's back. You know, hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that bell so you know when I go live and when I uh, do my live streams because you already know I'll be live for this game. And then right after, I'll be doing my game recap, hopefully for a Browns dub. But if we lose, you know, it's whatever, you know. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um... Hopefully we get that dub and start off the season 1-0 for the first time since Jeff Garcia was our quarterback. How about that, huh? It's crazy. Been, uh, what now, 16 years going on around there since we won a week one game? By the way, it was against the Ravens at home.
<laughs> How about that? Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm Crazy Dog 99. Let's go, Browns. And I'm out.